1951. Melvin was preparing for a Carnegie Hall debut, and uh, I was a student at the same school in here in Manhattan, and he needed someone to sort of rehearse the second piano part for the Liszt E flat piano concerto. I had two pianos at home, and I volunteered to do it, and uh, we've been playing two pianos ever since. So we started the team that summer, and in the summer of 51, we began. We spent the first five years of our lives, uh, as Bobby Short would say, as saloon players. When we first started playing as a two-piano team, we were at the Ritz-Carlton in Atlantic City. And we were playing some silly little piece by Paul Dini called the Valtz Poupe or something. <laughs> And Melvin was so meticulous as a student, better than I in the beginning. And Not at the end? No. <laughs> uh, but what happened is, in this silly little piece, there was a forte and a mezzo piano and a this and such. And this was a transcription of that silly little piece. And Melvin was a stickler. So he said, I want to hear you play your part independently before we put it together. And I was sort of embellishing. I was making a little bit more. He said, you're not watching the piano. You're not watching the mezzo forte. You're not doing this and that. But I was adding, I was embellishing with some chords. And I thought it made it even better than it was. And he said, you're not doing it correctly. I said, if you say that one more time, I'll tear this up. <laughs> and he said, you're not doing it correctly. I tore the piece up and we never had to play it again. Uh, we went from Atlantic City, and then we went to Dayton, Ohio for 10 weeks, and then we went to the Boca Raton Hotel and Club. One of our great engagements was in Cleveland. We were told we are gonna be playing in a magnificent restaurant, Cleveland's Best, and we were gonna be booked there for four weeks. And we got to Cleveland, and the restaurant was beautiful in one part of the room, but we weren't playing in the restaurant, we were playing on top of a bar. And I had a big grand piano, and Norman, because I was the bigger of the two, he decided he would take the little spinet behind, behind the piano. And the only reason, way I could see him was to look up the mirror, and I could see when he was going to begin, and then we'd start playing. I will never forget the feeling after practicing classical music our whole lives and so on, when they opened the bar, and we had to go under Underneath. all the bottles of liquor to get back up to the top of the bar. And we were young. I was a milk drinker. We got a marvelous review from a fabulous critic there by the name of Windsor French. And uh, he said that the Steckman Horror was, uh, they were teaching taste, technique, and style to the people of Cleveland. And we used that quote for 40 years on all our brochures. They didn't know it was from a bar. And we dropped a lot of our leaflets in New York to managers and so on. And uh, a manager, Kenny Allen, called us and he said, you know, I'm interested. I'm going to send Phil Pryor to Dayton to hear you. He'll be coming in tonight about 10 o'clock. He auditioned us after 1 o'clock in the morning. We finished playing. We played in the bar, Brahms, Chopin. And he said, if you guys will get a truck and two pianos, you've got a tour next season. We didn't even drive. We had no license. And we got into the truck with two pianos, and our first date was Ada, Oklahoma. Melvin had never been in a truck in his life. And the greatest thing we learned was how to take two Steinway concert grands, take the covers off, turn them upside down, and put the legs on. And there wasn't a concept that Melvin and I played at, uh, that he didn't sit under the piano for the first 10 years and jimmy the pedals on and I banged the legs in. But we did play Uranium City, Canada, mm -hmm. where we were traveling in the town by dog sled to and from the concert hall. That's right. You know what you left out, though, you know? You skipped something that we waited three years to do. We were already... That's right. We played the Radio City Music Hall. We were the first two piano team to play the music hall. 
and uh, we were there with the film Tonight We Sing, which was, which was the life of Saul Hurok. And uh, we were there for 84 performances and never saw the movie because we were always going around on the circle on the stage. We only became what we are because of playing thousands of concerts. When the two of us started as a duo piano team at 19, we had 3,000 outlets available to us to play recitals. Out of the 3,000 towns, there are now 350 left. So t take me back to you finding the house on Maple Avenue, because it wasn't in very good shape. It was a pretty sad looking thing, wasn't it? We were having dinner with um, some people we knew. He was a builder, and it was Christmas time. And he just mentioned that uh, he had a house on Maple Avenue that he was considering buying and tearing it down and putting up two, because it was a double lot. And Mel had become ill on a previous tour, and we had decided that we would probably need a second career as opposed to just going on concert tour, and we thought we should open up a music school because we'd been involved with summer camps for many, many years, and we were always involved with teaching young people and encouraging young people. Uh, we paid for the house that time, it was a third of an acre, and I think at the time we paid $10,500. And that's how it began. Oh, yeah. and we I want to ask about that. Maybe that takes you to my next question about the recitals, mm -hmm. which were some of the most terrifying things for a lot of us. We had to memorize. Oh, yes. We had to memorize, and we had to dress, and we had to rehearse. And I remember there was that, there'd be the rehearsal where you have to go in, practice your bow, and it was the two of you sitting there, and maybe your teacher was off to the side. That's correct. Pretty formal situation for seven-year-olds. Sure. Why was that so important to do it that way? One learns a great deal from performance. So I mean, the, the student population grew and grew. What was its peak? I mean, how 500 students. 500. Annually. Uh, annually. I mean, and a yeah. faculty of 25. But don't forget, we did expand. Several times. A couple times. No, but not only were we piano, we had every instrument of the orchestra mm -hmm. and the voice department mm -hmm. and classical guitar. So it really, we had 25 faculty members. The pleasure of your company is a set of five books of original piano duets, beginning at an early grade level with book one and advancing progressively through books two, three, four, and five. Book one. Did you give any thought to saying, you know what, we've done well, we've been successful, why don't we retire? No. That never popped up in your mind? Still does. Still does. <laughs> well, we're all grateful for that. No, no. So you just, you close the school, okay, what's next? Competitions are important for these young people to have the opportunity of playing. In addition to our flagship program, the New York International Piano Competition, the Stegman Horace Foundation assists young pianists at a strategic time in their musical development. We are committed to help all our contestants achieve their personal and professional goals through mentoring, through career guidance, artistic development, and performance opportunities throughout the year on the Young Artists series.
welcome to the Greater Stecker and Horowitz musical family. We salute you, we celebrate you, and we can't wait to hear you play. Although it is time to conclude and move on, we will not let you go. We feel that we have captured your personalities, your idiosyncrasies, your talent, and your dedication. We hope that you have captured our hearts and our devotion so that you will reach out to us at any time. The Stecker and Horowitz Foundation will always be there for you, and we, in turn, hope that you will do the same for us. Let the world be open to your talent and ambition. Fly high, soar beyond what you imagine to be your limitations. Use your imagination and experiment with new as well as traditional repertoire. The audiences are constantly awaiting new concepts, exciting talent, and artists who can communicate. You have and can always be certain that our blessings and support will be with you at all times. In our eyes, you are all winners, and there isn't one contestant that doesn't have something so very special. <laughs>